What's going on everybody, CFC DP here to give you a little bit of a match review from Leeds and Chelsea. Chelsea were horrible, horrible the entire game. I mean, a team that looked so good against Tottenham lacked so much composure and I think what we've boiled it down to, and now this is coming after a couple days after the game, and what I've kind of determined, and this is the help of football Twitter as well, is that Thomas Tuchel is playing players out of position, and we've known this for a while. This has happened. Kai Havertz is not a striker. Reese James is not a right center back. Connor Gallagher can't be deployed as a six. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, while he looked pretty strong at right wing back, he is not a right wing back. And this is a culmination of a few things. It's a culmination of the squad being so littered with former players from former managers and having a couple guys that Tuchel likes and having to work with it. Now, the only players that I think Tuchel really says, I'm going to keep these guys no matter what, are Reese James, Mason Mount, Thiago Silva, Cucurella, and maybe Ben Chilwell. That's it. Now, I think Mateo Kovacic is in there as well. Um, Conte, he, he can't play without Conte right now, but he's going to have to be replaced. So that's a really select few of guys that you can tell Thomas Tuchel trusts to run his system. Now, I was talking on Twitter with other people about this, and we were discussing that Todd Bowley and their kind of plan for Chelsea once they bought them was to be like Liverpool, to run how Fenway Sports Group runs Liverpool. They are shrewd on the transfer market. They back their manager. They really formulate the team just like how their manager Klopp wants it, and it works out really good for the most part. They lost to Manchester United today, but I digress. Anyways, so how can Tuchel get to that point without tearing everything down? I don't know if there is a way to do that. You want to slowly transition into his team. I understand that. You can start to phase players out, and you have to do that. But if you look at where Liverpool was when Klopp started, the only person on their first team was that is still there is Milner, club captain, and everybody else was gone. They finished 6th and 8th in his first two seasons and since then have finished top 4, top 4, top 4, top 4, top 4. That is sustainability, but it took two years of being not very good for that to happen. Now, they were able to get very good and um, good scouting, and they were about to, they were hired, you know, they hired Michael Edwards to get their team shaped. They did strong transfer decisions. Sala, Firmino, Fabinho, all that. Van Dijk, they did all of that, and they got it 100% right. And it's not as easy as just saying, oh, we want this player, this player, this player. Some players aren't going to work and whatnot. But... That is the style and the teardown that they had to do to completely change to get to where they are today. Same thing with Manchester City. They had to completely tear down their squad to get how they want it in the manager's eyes. So if Todd Bowley is confident in saying that Thomas Tuchel is the guy I want to lead us, then that needs to be the case. And there needs to be assurances that, one, Thomas Tuchel is going to be here for a longer period of time in order to see this out in full. So that's why you hear in the contract extensions come up. And two, Chelsea fans are going to have to be honestly okay with taking a small step back for the meantime. They're going to have to be, you know, we can't be necessary. We're not at the point where we're ready to buy that final piece to put it all together like we thought we were after the Champions League. That's not the case. We were not a Lukaku away from, from winning. We won the Champions League and that was fantastic, but... It was more of a flash in the pan, everything went right circumstance, and it did, and we won, and you can never take that away from us. But in terms of sustainability and winning the Premier League, you're going to have to see a bit of overhaul in the squad. And back to the original point, and this is tying it all together to the Leeds game, these players are playing out of position because Tuchel does not trust the players in those positions to play. He doesn't trust Pulisic, he doesn't trust Ziyech. He doesn't trust um, 
Aspilicueta at right center back. You know, he doesn't really trust Ga- Gallagher to play that particular role that he has assigned to him for the last game and assigned his center back or central midfielders. So there is going to have to be somewhat of a systematic change or we're going to have to get used to some players not playing in the best spots until we can really get rid of some of these players. Like people are saying, yes, we want Ziyech to go and he was such a good creator and he could have really flourished in this team if given the opportunity. But let me tell you, Ziyech is not Tuchel's player. He's Lampard's player. Pretty much every Lampard player is slowly starting to be phased out of the squad. Werner's gone. Chilwell, they wouldn't have bought Cucurella if they still believed that he could do it. Silva, obviously, is such a key player. You know, there is going to be changes in this lineup, and Chelsea fans need to be aware that it's going to affect them. It's, It's going to not look pretty for a minute. And we have to be okay with that because if we expect to play like Man City or Liverpool, it, it's not going to happen. It's not, the consistency is not going to happen because a lot of these guys that need to go do not have the mentality to shut down a game when need be. You see Manchester City, they got down 3-1 to Newcastle on the road. Tough environment. Crowd roaring, ready to go. They're back, at, they're back in the big lights, uh, Newcastle. Nope. Man City said, that's fine. We are going to come back. We had a really bad first half. We're going to come back and get a, get something out of this game. And they did. They get, they drew. So that's a mentality thing. Once Mendy gave up that goal, which is a whole other su- subject, the mentality was gone. We were shocked because we actually played a pretty strong first 15 minutes where you did see some of that attacking interplay actually work. I mean, Sterling had a nice opportunity, was ruled offside. There was some other good opportunities. So what is it going to be to be consistent? And it's getting the inconsistent players out. It's getting Jorginho out. You know, it's getting Alonso, Aspilicueta. It's getting the attackers out, Pulisic and Ziyech. You know, Tuchel needs to be backed in the sense where he's bringing in his own guys. So you see today, Fafana's deal is going to be happening. It looks like Um, Leicester are prepared to sell now. So that's going to happen. You see Liao um, being considered and talked about. And it's an expensive, expensive purchase. Don't get me wrong. But that guy is a player. And Tuchel realizes that. The report came today that right when Todd Bowley got in, Liao was one of the first guys that he went and talked to. And why is that? Because he met with Tuchel right when he signed there. And Tuchel gave him a list. And who was one of the first names on there? It was Liao. So you see an attackive, attacking, creative winger. That's what we need. That's what we really need. Now, Gordon, a little bit younger, built for the future. Same with Leao, built for the future. Fafana, younger, built for the future. You get those guys in this year, and then you add a Declan Rice, or even a Frankie de Young, or some sort of form of another midfielder because that's going to need complete overhaul too so when we start talking about this squad transformation it's going to take a while for it to happen and we see this because I'm not saying we want to be like Arsenal I'm not saying that Arsenal is a mold that we want to follow however it took a point for them to say we need to get rid of these guys at all costs and they did and they had good young talent coming through. They bought where they felt like they needed to. And they're off and they're looking pretty good in the first couple games. Now, are we a better team than Arsenal now? It's to be seen because Chelsea are hurt right now in the midfield at the core of their you know, of the core of their team. So it is seeming all bad now, but how bad is it? It's tough to tell when we keep plugging in the gaps with these players that aren't really in it for the future. Now, a Koulibaly is understandable because the defense was going through so much and you needed something for sure. A certain can't-miss player, Koulibaly is that, despite his red card in the game against Leeds. Um, but overall, as it continues to shake out, 
you're going to see Chelsea buying for the future. Gordon, Liao, Chuko et etc., etc., etc. So that's kind of my philosophy on this, if you will. I, I know Chelsea Twitter has had sort of a meltdown, and I, I, I agree with a lot of what people say, but some of the stuff I don't agree with. If it was my choice, I'm backing Tuchel because I think that he is a top manager. I think he does have a plan. I don't think he has the players to fulfill his plan. And then what will happen when he gets his players? Time will tell. I think he's going to get it right. Um, But we don't completely know that yet because there is questions. There is questions about why. Kai Havertz hasn't looked good in a ten at a nine, and you're saying, well, maybe he's that's not really his position. Okay, that's fine. You had Lukaku, who is a nine. Well, he doesn't play technically Tuchel's type of football that he likes, but he was the best option at the time, and he really wanted to go back to Inter. So I don't know what to say. There, there's just so many ifs, ands, and buts that are valid arguments and valid reasons why things aren't going well with Chelsea's attack. And under Thomas Tuchel, but it's kind of at a point where I think that if he gets his players in correctly, and I think Sterling's a good start to that, you're going to see it click and work because it did against Tottenham. Um, but it needs to click more and more consistently, and there has to be that killer edge. And I just don't think those players that we have currently have that. Um, so yeah, that was kind of not really a match review, but it was more so a broad overview and broad thoughts about the game um in general you know we all know Chelsea was poor Jorginho was poor Mendy was poor Kai Havertz was poor um so you know take it for what it was it's a tough away game Chelsea were not necessarily prepared for it um for the way that Leeds was going to press them and really harass them and fair play to Leeds and Jesse Marsh and Brendan Aronson and um, they played a really good game and we did not. So we'll just have to keep going next week on Sunday. We play Leicester city or excuse me, Saturday. We play Leicester city. Uh, then a quick turnaround. I think it's Tuesday. Chelsea play at two o'clock away out Southampton. So two, six points should be assured from these two games. Um, we will see both teams have something to fight for, but Chelsea have more talent. So Let's see if they can make that work and not play down to their opponents like they have been for the past God knows how long they have been doing that. But it's been a while. So please go ahead. If we could get about 15, 20 likes on this video, that would be fantastic. Please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Follow. Putting out a lot of content in the next couple of weeks. We should have a transfer update episode coming for you in the next few days as well as a Leicester City match preview. So I want to thank you very much for tuning in and I hope you have a blessed rest of your night.